Hello everyone. Welcome to this free live class about of playing double stops. My name is Henrietta de Vreya. I'm a violin teacher in the UK and I'm the founder of Proam Strings. I am absolutely delighted to teach you today. We will be talking about double stops in this lecture. And there's people will be watching that have various different levels of playing. Um, we will go over how you can use playing double stops from the very early stages of violin playing to the very advanced double stops, which we find, for instance, in solo Bach and in the big concertos and so on. At the end of this class, you should have a clear understanding of how practicing double stops can, various, can, can benefit various aspects of your playing technique. And that goes from the use of the left hand to bowing technique and also, of course, intonation. You should also be able to identify at the end of this class how you can effectively learn to play double stops, both the easier ones and the more difficult double stops. I hope that you've got your instrument ready because we will do, be doing some exercises as well as talk about uh, double stops. Uh, but please feel free to play at home if you like. So let's now get started. Once you have reached a level of playing on your instrument where you're able to play double stops, you have achieved a remarkable level of technical accomplishment. And I can congratulate on, uh, on that reaching that level because now a whole new inspirational world of playing double, stop, stop, double stops will open up to you. A whole new chapter of violin technique will open up to you too. And I'm hoping that this class will inspire you to use your double stops to further your technique, as well as give you pleasure playing repertoire, which maybe beforehand you have not been able to master. And which is so much more interesting and demanding than before you were able to play double stops. Learning to play double stops offers some real challenges. But as I've said before, it will benefit many areas of your violin playing technique. In this, in this lecture, I will make a distinction between different aspects of playing. Firstly, I would like to discuss how playing double stops will enhance your technique. I will demonstrate in what way double stops develop your hearing and your intonation and your bowing technique and your left hand technique. And secondly, I will show you how you can practice playing double stops so that you can successfully apply um, playing double stops in your repertoire. In the journey from beginner to advanced violin playing, double stop playing, in my view, should feature quite early on. Namely, as soon as you as a player have developed sufficient flexibility and control for the fingers to fall from the base knuckle and are able to work more or less independently. And what I mean by that is this. When fingers fall from the base knuckle, it means these are the base knuckles. They fall from upright, from above the strings like that. And once you're able to play like that and use your fingers more or less independently, then it's time for you to learn to play double stops. I am always looking for a thumb that doesn't squeeze the neck of the violin here. And for fingers that play on their fingertips. So if you find yourself playing like this, it's quite early for you to um, learn to play double stops because your fingers are moving sideways when they go onto the strings and they don't fall from the base knuckle. So you want to get used to playing with your wrist straighter first and getting your fingers more above the strings um, so that they can fall down more in an upright motion, shall we say. So your fingers, we're looking for fingers to play on their fingertips, although you might argue that sometimes when you play double stops, your fingers deliberately go a little bit flatter to catch more than one string at a time. So I start my pupils on their double stops quite early on, although you might argue that they are very, very easy double stops. Um, <clears throat> I ask my beginners at a fairly early stage to try and play one finger on two strings. For instance, when they play a first finger followed by another first finger on a different string, I'll, I'll say to them, place your finger now in between the two strings. I'll see if you can see it. 
And in effect, although that is a very rudimentary form of playing double stops, that is a form of playing double stops. Or if they have a second finger on two strings, same thing, or third finger. I'll show you an example in a minute. You will no doubt, when you're sort of an intermediate or advanced player, you will no doubt have used your double stops to check your third fingers with open strings, creating an octave interval to check your tuning. I will show you if this works. I'm going to experiment with that today. I will show you now an example of how you can play one finger on two strings. And this is usually my first tune that I use for beginners where they can play one finger on two strings. And you see the little diamond shape in the music. You see B followed by an E. And there I encourage my pupils to put one finger on two strings. So place the finger in between the two strings effectively. Double stops are a great way to build a good left hand shape. And it will allow the fingers to function both freely and to work together. And to encourage that, um, I'm a great fan of octaves. And in order, the order that I teach double stops in are usually octaves first, then sixth, then thirds, and later on larger intervals such as tenths and more unusual intervals as well. As you will find throughout this class, I think you can never do too much octave uh, practice on the violin and the viola, and therefore octave study should feature in any practice routine. So whenever you warm up, you might do a little section of octaves, and you'll find that over time, all these little couple of minutes of octave practice add up, and you'll find yourself being very comfortable playing octaves. And like I said, octave study develops listening, to your playing in a way no other technique does. And listening to intonation is definitely an area of violin playing that is often neglected, but it is an essential technical skill which can, can be developed. And so can your hearing. Your hearing can actually get better over time. Once you start to listen, really listen out for intonation, you can improve your hearing by just practicing it. Um, and of course, you can understand that when you're hearing gets better, your tuning overall in any of your pieces, in any type of music that you play, will get better as well. How can you practice octaves then? There are many different tutor books that show ways of practicing octaves, many of whom write playing octaves with rhythms. I tend to incorporate practicing octaves with slow scale practice. I am very much, like I said before, interested in intonation, so um, I have to then allow myself time to listen to each interval before moving on to the next one. And therefore, I leave rhythms out completely. Instead, I play each interval twice and to try and improve the tuning on the second playing, no matter how well it sounded on the first go. So I'll give you an example of that. So I suggest you start with a D major scale in octaves. And I'll deliberately play out of tune the first time. So I'm going to play like this in broken chords first. And you can hear the double stop. I keep repeating and repeating and repeating until it gets in tune. And this way you develop your hearing, your pitch, pitching into um, how the tuning sounds. You will be surprised to find how quickly your intonation will improve with this method. And this is not only because your fingers will get better, but most importantly, because you're listening better and your hearing has become more acute. So when you start learning octaves, I'd suggest you start with G and D major, and from there on, move through all the scales gradually, 
two and three octaves in octaves and also octave scales on one string. Uh, with my more advanced students, we have a habit of playing one major scale in octaves and one minor scale in octaves every lesson as a warm up at the beginning of the lesson. Um, that way, in about half a year, 24 weeks, you will have, 26 weeks, you will have uh, covered all the different keys and you can then move on to practicing these scales if you've done them across the strings before. Practice them on one string, which is a slightly more difficult exercise, but equally thorough and useful for our practicing intonation. A part of playing double stops is playing chords. And most people find playing chords quite challenging. Playing chords, though, if you, if you think about it, is really playing two sets of double stops in quick succession. We know that on the violin, you can really only play three part chords when you play very loudly with a lot of bow pressure. Most of the time, though, we will split chords into, into two parts so that only two notes are played at the same time. If you have got a three part chord, which consists of three notes, you play the bottom note and the middle note of the chord first, and then you switch to the middle note and the top note in your chord. Take a look at this example taken from an Allegro attributed to Handel. And this example that I'm going to show you is currently in the ABRSM grade five syllabus. And here we find a chord which at the bottom has an F sharp, then an A sharp and then an E. And I'd like you to make a habit of playing, of reading chords from the bottom note upwards because the bottom note will be the first note um, that you will play. Um, so when playing this chord, we'll play the bottom two notes first, followed by the top two notes. Not only does this involve a nimble use of the left hand fingers, we will also need to think carefully about the bowing and how we use the right elbow to play this chord successfully. And this is a clear example of how this double stop playing um, will improve both your bowing technique and your left hand technique. Now this chord, um, you can see the F sharp is played with the third finger and the A sharp is played with the first finger. So we are really in the half position. So look at the bar before the chord. When we're playing the B, which is the last note of bar 21, so that is the note immediately before the chord, we have to prepare the bow for the string crossing going to the D string. So I'm playing that B as an up bow on the A string. And for the chord, I need to go to the D string. So um, whilst we play the last note of the previous bar, our right elbow needs to go up slightly just to prepare that for that string crossing. At the same time, our fingers should hover above the strings to prepare to play the chord. So then when you play the bottom half of this chord, while you're playing the F sharp and the A sharp, the right elbow should come down a little bit so that the bow moves towards the E string in preparation for the E at the top. And you can imagine that when you practice it like this and think about your bowing technique as well as about your left hand technique, um, this can only be practiced in a controlled way when you practice really slowly. And that is my main lesson to you perhaps today is that when you practice double stops, please go incredibly slowly because it's much easier to hear and it's much easier to control the left hand fingers and also the bow. I'd like to move on to some more dub difficult double stop playing now. And I'll show you next an, an, an example from the Andante from Bach's second sonata for violin. Here we have another example of how double stop playing will develop your bowing technique. While you play the E, 
the top note of the first chord on the D string, your bow will need to nudge towards the G string and gently play the C, then release and play the C again. This is done with the right wrist and it is a very delicate movement, just gently pronating the right hand and back again. You can try it for yourself at home and see how you can do that. So the melody is really in the top line and you'd need to bring out the E a little bit more loudly than the C's. The C's uh, underneath it are really for the accompaniment of the E and they, they for, therefore don't have to sound out that loud. So you can very, very gently touch them with your bow on the G string. So very similar to uh, piano playing, you can voice these chords and make sure that you bring out the melody more than the accompaniment. Now this example also shows the need for practicing sixths and thirds. And if you've never practiced these before, I would recommend you start with the sixths and when you feel comfortable playing sixths, move on to the thirds. I would say that practicing sixth in broken chords as is suggested in the ABRSM scale books, is the right way forward. I will show you some examples here. This example here is from the ABRSM grade seven scale book. Um, and you can practice them in the same way as I've just shown you the octaves. So you break the chord first and then you play uh, the two notes together as a minim. And then my variation would be to keep repeating that minim a couple of times before you move on to the next bar. So very similar to how I just played your octaves. Um, take your time before you move on and really listen very carefully to the tuning before you move on. Here's another example for you, and this example is taken from the ABRSM Grade 8 scale book. And you can see these are thirds. And again, um, the suggested way of playing is to break the two notes, first play them separately and then play them together. And again, I would recommend if you practice this, uh, keep on repeating the long double stop a few more times before you move on. Eventually, you will be able to go through the whole piece, of course, but when you practice, I suggest you just keep with one bar, repeat it over and over, then move on to the next bar. So these are just a couple of examples and ways of practicing that I would recommend for you. Um, if you would like to try some other double stop studies, I suggest you have a go at ZIT, Opus 32, Book 5, and we, I spell that S-I-T-T, -T, Opus 32, Book 5. And there is another book with lovely double stop tunes for you to try, and that is called Melodious Double Stops by Josephine Trott. And these are just really, really nice pieces to play. Um, whereas the ZIT is more like a practice book and it's very intense and thorough, uh, and the melodies are lovely too, but they're not <laughs> not in a long way as melodious as the double stops by Josephine Trott. After you've finished those and you've moved your technique forward all around, then you can of course move on to the double stop studies in Kreutzer. And Kreutzer has got quite a few um, double stops, starting with the more straightforward ones to the very, very difficult ones. And then of course, following on with uh, Massas Etude Speciale and then the Rhoda Studies. So, before we, we come to the end of this class, I would like to wish you lots and lots of happy practicing with your doubles, double stops. Um, always remember that practicing a little and often is the way forward for most people. When you first set off to play double stops, they can be quite tiring for the left hand and arm. So take it easy and stop when you feel tired and please don't despair when, if you find that playing double stops takes more time than you thought first. I hope I can reassure, reassure you that it does for most people. 
If you have any questions about playing double stops, please email me on info at proamstrings.com. And if you feel that you might benefit from some specialist individual input in your playing, please book a Skype lesson or use our video feedback classes. You can find both of these and other technique videos on www.proamstrings.com. Thank you very much for watching and happy playing. Bye.